I used to play cards with Pat Koontz. Thank you, Pat, for putting this together. We really appreciate it. Okay. Let's get into this. This is some serious shit. Okay. First of all, I'm here to talk about how the media functions and new media systems, because right now we're in the midst of a digital revolution. How is that affecting everyone in this room in terms of their media consumption? The first thing that's important to understand about this is how the media used to work. It used to be a sing-along with Christian Bale where people who were journalists put information alongside ads into physical bundles and then they distributed these bundles out through channels. A one to two minute package on TV is usually what we think of for uh, distribution and they came in DMAs, these are digital market areas like the Twin Cities and they came at specific times to specific audiences. Well, it's not like that anymore. We've actually, because of the digital distribution, had content freed from the limitations of physical media, whether it's radio or print or whatever. This is what the music industry taught us like five years ago, right? Is we're not confined by this stuff anymore. And when content is freed because of these technology changes, we exist in a diversified marketplace. We have the traditional legacy media, and we have digital media, including the Twitter wall. And I'll get to that in a second. But it used to be you could send a press release to a news desk, and then they would put it in their bundles of information. They would send it to a wide audience at a specific time. It's not like that anymore. We now know that we have markets, which are conversations. These conversations mean that we have multiple choices for news and information. We don't have to tune in at 5 o'clock anymore. We don't have to tune in to uh, the 6 p.m. newscast or drive time radio. We have a lot more selection. Now, a couple things have happened because of this. The technology has enabled users. This is the Twitter wall. Everyone in here has access to broadcast to this microcosm of people by putting up, you know, boners or such and such, Ignite Minneapolis, which is which, that's what's been going on. Uh, and we do that through these new applications. So we need to figure out, okay, who's reputable? Who can we believe in this just smattering of information that's coming up? And this is what journalism is currently faced with. We have all these new applications and we have a ton of content that goes up, including aggregation. So all the stories that go up, they're aggregated on Twitter in a small sense, and they're aggregated in Google in a large sense. And if you need a direct story, you can go to whatever legacy media you have and check it out on the page. Now, because we have all this technology, we're not limited to the physical media anymore. We can expand what we're doing. And I work at a legacy media place, and we can actually take the package that we would sell and put additional information on it. We can also break news stories to you on your iPhones that you're using, walking around with, and then develop the news cycle through the course of the day until you read about it uh, the next day with your coffee and your print edition. Those aren't going away. What we can also do now is because of your Netflix box and Hulu and the boxy and all that fun stuff, what we can do is also interface with your television. If you're someone who likes news on your couch, we can do that now. What's the big question for all this? Well, what is journalism? What is news? Now, I hate to ruin it for everybody, but people have been talking about Lost on the Twitter wall. It's a little unfortunate. It might ruin it for some people. But anything can be news and information if it's circulated at this point. What we're going to see in the next year to three years is you yourself will be able to set up your own news and news and information network. This is a big deal. You don't have to be home at five o'clock to catch a news and you don't have to get a newspaper in the morning. You can check the new game that's going out for how the media operates. It's coming to you when you want it. Now, this means blogs, this means uh, uh, Twitter feeds, but we also need to monetize the service. And you know, I'm sure everyone here is aware that there's a lot of struggles right now with the institutional and legacy media on how to monetize. If anyone ever says you can't monetize pushing content or driving content as a news outlet, they're wrong. Why are they wrong? It's because they're dealing with poor design. This right here, if this is a garden, you've got a lot of weeds, right? If this over here is your Tumblr page and you're just pushing content, that's a great setup. Inform your readers and give them what they need in the fashion that they need it. If you need to check me out, actually, you can go to crazyinternetbeats.com. It's a Tumblr blog. I'm just pushing content. 
And I'm also monetizing by doing sales and advertising with WCCO, okay? Now you can integrate these things for everything and yourselves develop your own personal network of news and information. I encourage you to do so. I just tried to put that slide in there because I liked it. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. <laughs>